Now the breaking process again according to the slaveholder, was the same for the African as it was for the horse. Same process. In other words, they, I mean, man, this thing is so deep how they go. It actually says, you must keep your eye and thoughts on the female. Sisters, you've got to understand how important your role is. Their agenda was keep your eye on the black female and on the offspring of the horse and the female. Pay little attention to the generation of the original breaking. In other words, those first few people that you broke, don't pay them no mind. Your goal is on future generations. Therefore, if you break the female mother, this is Willie Lynch's concept. She will break the offspring in its early years of development. Did y'all hear that? If you break the female mother, she will break her own offspring. In the early years of its development until it's old enough to work. And when it is old enough to work, she will deliver her own offspring up to the slaveholder. Because her normal female protection if tendencies will have been lost in the original breaking process. It goes on to say, for example, take the wild stud horse, a female horse, and an already infant horse and compare the process with two captured African males in their natural state. Now check this out. This is going to make you a little angry. Two African males in their natural state, a pregnant African woman with her infant offspring. Mm, 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 mm. It goes on to say, breed the mare and the stud until you have a desired offspring. Mm. Then you can turn the stud to freedom until you need him again. Train the female horse where she will eat out of your hand. And she in turn will train her infant horse to eat out of your hand also. When it comes to breaking the uncivilized African, use the same process. But vary the degree, the degree and step up the pressure so as to do a complete reversal of mind. Take, check this what they did. Take the meanest and most restless African. Y'all see this in your head now. Take the meanest and most restless African, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male Africans and the females and the African infants. Tar and feather him. Tie each leg to a different horse faced in opposite directions. Set him afire and beat both horses to pull him apart in front of the other Africans while they're looking at him. The next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining African males to the point of death in front of the females. Y'all hear this? Don't kill them though, but put the fear of God in them. Now when will God so don't kill them because they can be, they can be, it says here, they can be useful for future breeding. The breaking process of the African woman. Take the African female, check this out now, and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires. White man. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. All right, all right. Y'all hear this? The black female is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract the last bit of resistance out of her. Take care not to kill her. 
For in doing so, you spoil good economics. When she is in complete submission, she will train her own offspring in their early years to submit to you when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the African female. It gets deep here, y'all, because it says, at this point we have now reversed the relationship. Now see what has happened. They have taken the strong black African male and totally destroyed his image while, they, while the women and children were watching. So now in the back of the woman's mind, black men, you can't protect us. Y'all follow this thing? You are not in the position to look after us. That's what's happening here. So in her, see here it goes and say, in her natural state, she would have a strong dependency on that African man. I'm going to say that again, since we are so unnaturalized now. In her natural state, the black woman would have a strong dependency on that black African man. Man. And it goes on to say, and she would raise her offspring to be dependent like she is. So in the natural state of the African, the woman and the child was very dependent on the strong African man. Do y'all see what I'm saying? It goes on to say, nature provided for this type of balance. And then it goes on to notice what he says. He says, but we reversed nature. I need to go for a walk on that one, but I... But we reversed nature by burning and pulling a civilized African apart and bull whipping the others in front of them to the point of death. All in her presence, we reversed what is natural. We got rid of her natural tendency to depend upon her man. We got rid of that. And God knows they did a good job. Because there's something real sick when a black woman can say to a black man, I don't need you. The only thing I need you for is... And if you don't do that too well, I don't need you at all. Y'all know, y'all know, don't y'all get deep on me. Y'all know we talk like that. Know we talk like that. Check out what it goes on to say. It says, by her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed, the ordeal causes her to move from her psychological dependent state to a frozen, a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles. <laughs> Y'all hear this? What are the results? It goes on to say, and this, this is what you call social engineering, brothers and sisters. Here's what it says. What are the results? You've got the African woman out front and the African man behind and scared. This is a perfect situation for us to have sound sleep and economics. Before the breaking process, we had to be on alert and on guard at all times. Check this out now. Now we can sleep soundly. For out of frozen fear, his woman stands guard for us. Uh, 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 uh. He 
cannot get past her early slave molding process. He's a good tool, now ready to be tied to a horse at a tender age. And by the time the African boy reaches the age of 16, he is broken in and ready for a long life of sound and efficient work and the reproduction of a good unit labor force. Our oh, brothers and sisters, it gets even deeper than that. It says, through breaking the uncivilized, savage Africans. Oh, by the way, I put the word Africans in here. Because every time I say the word Africans, the word they had was niggers. Follow what I'm saying? So you can kind of hear it better if you put that in there. Through breaking the uncivilized, savage Africans by throwing the African female savage into a frozen psychological state of independence, and then I got this underscored, by killing off the protective male image, I gotta repeat that again, by killing off the protective male image, by killing off the protective male image, and by creating a submissive dependent mind, of the African male slave, we have created a cycle that will turn on its own axis. Unless, it actually says right in the document, unless a phenomenon occurs and reshifts the position of the male and female slaves. What would be that phenomenon? The truth of our African awareness rising up. The truth that they intentionally stole and hid. If we could ever go back and reclaim our story and put back in the psyche of our young people how great as Africans are, that would be the phenomenon that would reverse their program. Mm -hmm. it talks about the Negro marriage unit. Goes on to say, here's what we must do. We must breed two African males with two African females. Then take the African male away. Even though this is way back in the 1700s, people, it's still happening today. Breed them, make them have children, and then remove the African male from them and keep them moving and working. Let's say one African female bears an African female child and the other bears an African male. Both African females being with the influence of the African male will raise their offspring in a frozen, independent, psychological state. You hear this? They will raise their offspring into reverse positions. The one with the female offspring will teach her daughter to be like herself. Independent and distrust of the ability of the black male to be strong and protective. And the one with the male offspring will raise her son to be frozen and in subconscious fear for his life. Will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak but physically strong. And God knows we got a problem because I see more brothers walking around pumping iron and ain't got good sense of it. You're a brute and you have no intellect. The system it, it addresses that because why is it that we have weight rooms like crazy in our prisons? And if they do have a library, it ain't much bigger than a cubicle. Then it goes on to say, this is what we call good, sound, long-range, comprehensive planning. Look at the person next to you say, they think way down the road. In fact, let's look back at them one more time and say, they think way, way down the road. 
understand this, brothers and sisters. See, it's hard for many of us to come plantation, and if yours receive this indoctrination, they will carry it on and will become self-refueling and self-generating for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. Don't forget, you must pitch the old black male against the young black male. The young black male against the old black male. You must use dark-skinned slaves against white skin, uh, light-skinned slaves and light-skinned slaves versus dark-skinned slaves. You must use the female versus the male and the male against the female. You must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. But it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on only us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. For if used intensely for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful of each other. Thank you, gentlemen. And that's the end of his speech. Like I said, brothers and sisters, today's message is how to deactivate your willy lynch chip. Because what I just read here is all a part of the social engineering that we as Africans grew under.